It's Dr. Yvette Maureen here, and in line with manifesting healthy, purpose-driven, God-focused relationships, I invite you to get into my new series. I had the pleasure of sitting down with four dynamic couples for season one of the Prayer Life Devotional Expressions series. So I've got y'all here, the DNAs. Yes. Um, and tell me, how, how long have y'all been together? And tell me a little bit about uh, your family. Well, we've been well, we've been married for eleven years. Uh, been together for what, thirteen. We we got together in two thousand and six. Um, like our friend, like her best friend and one of my friends, they were together. So they wanted to do a double date. So um, basically, it was like a like a blind date kind of thing. Um, so I didn't really I didn't know her. So I was like, well, I want to like let's let's talk on the phone. So, you know, that way, if our personality match and everything like that. How blind? Like, they didn't give you a picture? No. No. Nothing. nothing. They said, oh, you might have seen him, but I was just like, how? Where? Yeah. And they couldn't describe him. And I was just like, okay. So, we literally, every time we wanted to link up, it was just always like, I said no. He said no. I was just like, I'm good in my singlehood. I don't want to be set up. And it was just, I think he called him and he was just like, yo, 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 you got to link up with yeah. this with this girl or whatever. And then I think he called me. It was the Miami Heat 2006 championship. I'm all game into one. the um, to the game. He's into it. I'm like, oh, God, someone's interrupting me while watching the game. He's watching it. And then we just started talking and we are fell in love with our love of basketball. I was naming PJ yeah. Brown and all you know old Miami Heat players. Yeah, I was, I was like, oh, she got them. my attention because I'm so, watching the game and my friend who was calling me, I'm like, I was not answering his calls at all. He called me maybe like 10, 15 <laughs> times and like, oh, it's an emergency, emergency. I said, what's going on? Yo, man, I, 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 I still want you to meet this girl. I said, you still on this man? <laughs> like, yo, man, I'm good. I'm, I'm chilling right now. I'm watching the game. So I was like, so he kept, now nah, you got to meet her. You got to meet her. I said, okay, okay, give me her number, let's talk or whatnot. And she wasn't like, you know, she was chilling. And then I, I found out she was watching the game. I like, oh, you're Miami Heat fan? Yeah, ever since the Alonzo Mornings, PJ Tucker. Like, I'm, I, I said, PJ Tucker, like PJ Brown, you know, uh, Leonard. I said, whoa, I said, you know, all he the old school right. players. I said, you got my attention. Yeah, the old players. The original. I said, you got my attention. Yeah, so we, we spoke throughout the whole game. Mm-hmm. Like, I wasn't paying Okay, so you're egging your friend who's calling you throughout the game. But yeah. Now, you yeah. get a call and that let's call it it's worth it. Yeah, yes. yeah. So we were on the phone for hours. Yeah. Like even after the game ended, we were still on the phone, like just talking and connecting. You know, so for us, for me it was just like, you know, I said, like, Okay God, like this is a cool girl, you know. I'm like just I I literally made a small prayer, like God just like Holy Spirit, just lead me in this relationship, wherever it leads, whether it leads to just a friendship or marriage or whatever it may be. I want to make sure that I add value to her life, and I want to make sure she adds value to mine. I don't want us wasting each other's time. You know, I, I want to make sure that we we add value to each other, you know, wherever it, that may be, you know. What was your prayer? Did you, well, first off, because he's, he's kind of speaking as if he had this thought of you being his wife or his, at least the relationship going somewhere. Did you feel the same way right out the gate, or were you just kind of open? I mean... I was just, because I was already single for so long and I was like, okay, God, I'm going to save myself for my husband. I guess I was in the headspace of, okay, whatever happened, if it's in God's will, it will happen because I went through a tough breakup, you know, so I was just like, okay. So then it was just something that night, the Holy Spirit was just speaking to me. I don't even remember what he, the, the Spirit stated, but I remember the next day I told my little sister, I said, Manushka. I don't know how this guy looks, but I need to stalk him at Family Christian Store. <laughs> that's why. That's why. We, that's why. I and at. he said he was the only black guy. So then, you know, I go in and I'm like, oh gosh. So I will, and I see him. And I'm like, Manushka, Manushka, that's stalking. Him. Wait, that's so him. you were stalking, she was stalking the man. Me. She was stalking. I, I admit it. Yeah. So yeah. She finally, she, after 12 years, she finally admits that she, <laughs> she was stalking me. Sorry, I'm sure this has been a debate. I'm sorry that we <laughs> it's been a debate. to resurrect it's been that. A it's been a debate. So I was like. Oh my gosh, that's him. That's him. So I go up to him and I said, 
hi, are you Ezra? And then he was like, um, yes. And I was like, okay, where's some CD or something? And he was like, it's this way. And then I was like, okay. And I walked away and he said, hold on, hold on, hold on. Are you Diana? Yeah, like she's going to walk away. Like... I said, yes, I'm Diana. <laughs> and then we were just like, okay, okay. And then we just walked away. So it was just, you know, throughout that whole process, I was working. He wasn't communicating as much. So I was like, okay, God, I don't think he's feeling me. I was just like why is it taking so long for him to call me text me i was just like i'm really feeling this dude you know god what is going on yeah for me i was i was going to school full time and working full time so and i was part of my at church i was involved in the youth ministry i was one of the, one of the leaders in the youth ministry so i had a busy schedule so for me and, and for me that was my prayer like i wanted to take my time with with this uh with this young lady because previously i proposed to someone before Right. And it didn't really work out well. We were we weren't on the same page. And, you know, so for me, I was like, well, you know what? This time I'm going to take my time. If it's to be, it's going to happen or whatnot. So I was very interested, but I was just like, you know what? Let me just play it cool. So what's interesting is both of you all talk about before meeting, having been let down or been hurt yeah. or being guarded, even in your approach to dating and getting to know each other. Which, that's real, like that's a real feeling that you all had to overcome. How did y'all get past that? I believe for me, I immersed myself in church. It, it was just being around my friends. We were in a dance ministry. I think that's what it was when I noticed that I wasn't putting God first when I was partying in school. It would always end in havoc or whatever. I was just like, I was, yeah, you, you get that temporary happiness, but I was just like, okay, God, I want to do this right. I want to get baptized. I want to spend time in your word. And when I did that and I was like, I want to dedicate myself to you. So I did a rededication ceremony where we went up, they prayed for us, me and my friends. And from then I just started to see the shift. And when I was just like, God, whoever I give myself ne um, the next time will be my husband. And I was content with being single. And I think that's what it was where it's just like, okay, you know, I have my girls and family and all this other stuff. I wasn't looking for something like that. So I think when God noticed that I wouldn't have put a relationship before him, if I got it, then Ezra came in a picture because he was just a breath of fresh air. Like oh nobody I ever expected. His personality is totally Mona. different. Mona. <laughs> Personality is t totally different, not my type or anything or whatever. And I'm just like, wow, God, like just to see somebody on fire for God, like, because I came from a Baptist church and usually with Baptist church, Haitian Baptist, we're not shouting, we're not, you know, doing all of that. So when I saw that, I was just like, okay, he, he's, is, is this is normal? Is this weird? Hearing somebody like, hallelujah, he's at, like louder than everybody there so i was just like okay god this is different and i like it yeah for me i was like immer i was already like immersed in god but you know i had a desire to get married i wanted to get married you know so um at that time um like i said i, I proposed to someone before and it was just a connection you know we grew up in church together you know me and this, uh, this other young lady we grew up in church together right. we had feelings for each other but it was never like a real committed right. this is my boyfriend this is my girlfriend type of thing or whatnot and that's kind of what i wanted you know so when that didn't happen you know i was just like you know at first i was almost kind of turned off by church because i was like we went to the same church yeah you know but god literally led me like he changed my work schedule so i had to work on sundays and and um so a friend of mine told me that oh well you know um you can go to this church because they have service um at an earlier time i know like, oh, that's perfect so i started going to a church which is my church now a uh, community christian church uh, my pastor eddie so i started going to that church and i was able to go there and go to work right after and that was just a time for God to like kind of keep me away from other folks yeah. and really focus on him, you know, and really just focus on just, you know, immersing my my hurts or my what my my vulnerabilities to him and not having to worry about who else was at the service. Right. So that I felt like it was kind of God sheltering me mm -hmm. until that time came. So I wasn't I wasn't ready. I, I wasn't like ready for the next person or this and that but like literally a couple months afterwards you know that's when my friend called and you know we got connected with diana i got connected with diana diana and it was just beautiful it was just beautiful uh, and do y'all do y'all see the similarity in y'all's paths though 
I mean, I see it. It seems I like now see they're yeah. not at, we're talking. I've, yeah, never, I've, never, I've noticed never noticed it. Before. it. Never noticed it. Really? So what I see, you all had a situation where you were trying to commit to someone else before meeting each other. And that wasn't the one, clearly. That was a mixed match. But instead of just still being out there trying to find someone, you all kind of converted to or reverted to seeking God first, yes. hiding in his word, being very careful. And, and, and what you're saying is um, protective of your body, protective of your mind, protective of everything until you met the next one and then you all found each other in church. Or that's yeah. where you all found your love for each yeah, other. Yeah, it's true. I think for us as a man, you know, when you open yourself up to someone, it's hard for guys to open up already. So when you do open up and, you know, it doesn't kind of come back to you the way you thought, that's very hurtful. So that's why some guys, they just don't open up at all. They'd rather just be closed off, no emotion or whatnot, because it's not that we don't want to be emotional. It's because we know our feelings are very real. And sometimes we don't know how to handle you know, any type of let down and things of that nature. So we rather just block it out of our minds or whatnot. So for me, it was like, I don't want to be that kind of person that blocks off my emotions, but I don't want to feel this hurt because that hurt is real. You know, so being in front of God, like really opening up myself to God and really he, him kind of just rebuilding me like, hey, listen, like, you know, you can be vulnerable to me and I will never hurt you. You know, it, it strengthened me. So then when, when, and it prepared me because now when Diana came into the picture, I wasn't too quick and maybe she kind of took it like, I'm not interested, but it was more so, I just want to take my time. I want to make sure that it's, 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 I bring value, you bring value. We really take our time with our relationship. Because, you know, sometimes we'll get, oh God, this this is my wife or this is my husband, this, this and that. And God could very well be, be talking to you, right? I don't believe in soulmates, but I believe that, you know, um, you know, that compatibility is very important. You know, it has to be mutual. It has to make sure we have to make sure that not only are we connected spiritually, emotionally, but attracted to each other physically. Like, you know, all these things have to come into place. So for me, I want to make sure I took my time, make sure that, you know, it was a mutual connection with both of us, you know. And so that way it allowed me to be now vulnerable and for us to go deeper and become intimate. Emotionally, I'm talking about. <laughs> well, I just I had to look over. I was like, uh oh, where are we going with this? Okay. The couple's stories are meant to inspire and spark dialogue on how faith bonds our romantic relationships. We engage in open, candid discussions on boundaries, love, faith, prayer and marriage, the importance of true friendship, commitment, and what women and men really want from a significant other. We laughed cried and then it got real as we talked through what it takes to ride the highs and lows of a Christ-centered marriage.